Well, good morning, everybody. We're here for the OpenStack Compute State of the Project presentation. There are two of us. Well, there are two of us. So uh, this is uh, Vish Ashaya. He has been, um, I'd be surprised if you, if you don't already know Vish. Vish has been involved in Nova and in OpenStack since the very beginning of, of, of existence. Uh, he's been the leader of the Nova project since there was a leader of the Nova project. And I think this would be a really great time to thank Vish for all the hours he's put into the project. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, uh, this is Russell Bryant. Russell works for Red Hat. Uh, he started up with OpenStack Compute, what, God, about a year ago? Yeah, now? a little over a year, yeah. A little over a year ago, and uh, basically jumped right in and started refactoring everything and really annoyed me. No. Uh, he's been actually yeah. an incredible contributor to the project, and he's also, during the past six month cycle, took a lot of the load of being a PTL on. Um, we have an incredible, incredibly huge number of contributors at this point, and so managing, herding uh, all of the various felines that contribute to this product project is quite hard. And so having him help take over running the meetings and deal with blueprints and bugs has been a huge benefit and kept me sane over the past six months. And so I'm really glad that uh, someone who's as committed as I have been is willing to step up and take over. And uh, I think we're gonna have a great next six months with Russell at the helm. So give him a round of applause too. Thank you very much. And uh, while we're on the theme of thank yous, um, I think there's probably a lot of people in this room that, we, that deserve to be thanked. Um, obviously, I don't write all the code, and Vish hasn't written all the code. There's quite a lot, a lot of people that have uh, been contributing. And we, we both like this graph quite a bit. This is a graph of contributors per month uh, over time. So you see we have a really good trend, and we're sort of getting up towards 100 people in a given month. Um, and some more data. In the past 12 months, there's been over 6,000 uh, 6, commits. But but, but, but even more interesting than that, the number of people that have contributed to the code in the past 12 months is over 300 people. So kind of curious how many people we have in the room. If you have code in Nova, maybe throw your hand up. Great, so good number. Thank you all very much. It's, it's, uh, it certainly wouldn't yeah. be, the, wouldn't be where you. we are Round without you. Round of applause for all the contributors. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically what we're talking about is Grizzly to Havana. And, uh, that's what we're doing. We're going from becoming grizzled to becoming svelte and uh, cigar smokers. I don't know. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is split this up where um, I'm going to take the lead of talking about the past, since I am the past now. And uh, Russell's going to be talking about the future. So I'm going to go over a grizzly po postmortem, talking about what went well in grizzly, what we maybe could improve, and then what, uh, what all the features were that went in, which is what I know a lot of you are curious about. And then Russell's gonna talk about all the things we've been discussing at the Design Summit this week and what we're gonna be doing over the next six months. Um, so one of the things that went really well is we had a problem. You'll see the, the spike in the top of this graph um, around the middle of last year. Uh, this, this is our untriaged bugs in Nova. So these are bug reports that come in that no one's looked at yet. <laughs> uh, we got up over 200 at one point uh, last year. And during the last cycle, we identified that we needed to spend a little bit more attention to bug reports so that we could stay on top of things. And as you'll see, we, we made a lot of progress um, keeping the thing lower. We, at maximum, right before we went to the G, right before the G3 milestone, we had up to about 60 or so bugs. And we got rid of those as soon as we went into bug fixing mode. And we managed to, in general, keep the load of new bugs down so that at least we know when people are having problems, which I think has led to a much more stable product overall. Um, another thing that went really well is our feature merge cadence. So we got, a, in the last release during Folsom, we had a problem where a whole bunch of really big features got proposed right at the last minute. And so we were doing all sorts of feature freeze exceptions and trying to get these features in and it was kind of a mess. Um, so we focused this time on trying to get a better handle on which features were coming in when earlier. And we only, I think, did we only end up with one feature freeze exception? Yeah, and, and I don't think it was uh, anything too significant either. I think. So we, we did a lot better at getting the things in early and getting them reviewed quicker. So that all went really well. Um, another thing, and this isn't just the Nova team, uh, but our testing in CI has really improved. There's a number of major testing changes that have gone in. Um, we're up to about 5,600 unit tests now, which is one large change. Um, but we now have uh, upgrade testing in, in the gating system so that we're can, we can be sure that we're not breaking upgrades from release to release. 
We uh, have it, the Tempest coverage test has been improved a lot. So we're now actually testing a bunch more APIs than we were um, via our functional testing. And this, actually, I want to give a round of applause to the CI guys. I don't know if any of you are in here, but the people working on CI have really made this a lot better, and it's getting really, really good. So thanks for CI. <laughs> Stable releases. So what went wrong? Um, some of these I've, I've actually just become aware of recently. Uh, one of the things that we haven't been focusing on, and, and this hasn't been a huge problem up, up to date, is we haven't really been focusing on scale. And there's people out there that are saying, okay, OpenStack's been around for a while. What's gonna happen if I put a 16,000 um, node cluster together? Is that even gonna work? Uh, and apparently it does, but there are some major sort of issues when you get to that kind of scale. Um, and I think one of the things that we haven't really been paying attention to is what things break at large scale and how can we verify with performance testing uh, what kind of problems we're going to get and make sure that we don't regress. We actually had one regression during the Grizzly time frame in terms of database performance that we, didn't, we weren't aware of until someone took the code and actually put it out there and went, uh, yeah, there's a little bit worse performance here with the database, like it's 10 times as slow. So maybe there's something that went wrong there. Um, so we need some kind of general performance testing and we have some ideas for how that might work. Uh, it's not something we've really been focusing on and we need to because now is when people are coming in and trying to do these really, really large scale deploys with OpenStack. We want it to be uh, seamless. The other thing, so the last release we focused a lot on how do we split everything out? Like how do we separate the different projects into their own kind of, we took Nova Volume, completely got rid of it, put it out into the Cinder project. We try, we're trying to move everything over to Quantum. And all of that is great from a pro project management perspective and actually getting work done. Um, but it means that there's not as much focus on sort of things that are across projects. Like how do we deal with quotas in a way that's easy for an administrator to manage quotas across all the projects together? How do we manage scheduling across different individual silos of work? And how do we sort of drive forward the shared work? And it's, it's easy now that we have these little silos to forget about there, there's other groups out there working on other projects that, and we need to maintain that cross-project communication. So I think um, this is just sort of a natural result of, of separating and now we need to find the ways to build the bridges between the projects so that we're solving the right shared problems. And we have, like we've done a lot of work moving things in OpenStack Common and things along those lines, so we have some of the primitives in place to do this sharing, but we just need to you know, make it a priority to focus a little bit more on that. So those are the sort of major areas I see for improvement. I'm sure there's other people with have other ideas of things that we could do better, but um, those are the ones that have been popping up for me. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Grizzly features. Now, I, there was a ton of features. We had 66 blueprints go in and something like 700 bugs fixed during the Grizzly timeframe. So there's no way I can cover all of them. And I put a lot of them on these slides and I don't even think I can give detailed descriptions of every slide because it's just gonna be me droning on endlessly about, well, this feature added this support, et cetera. So I'm going to go through the slides relatively quickly, give you some kind of key points about things that I think were interesting in the different uh, features that came out and uh, not try and get too detailed in terms of everything that went in. One of my favorite ones, because I really like deleting code, is we actually, we deprecated Nova volume during the last release and we actually removed it. So the code is no longer in Nova, which means all of the volume code is in one place in Cinder, thank God. Um, and we had a really nice easy migration path for people that were on Nova volume to move over to Cinder, just replacing the API endpoint and, and it works essentially the same. So that was a really nice, the quantum migration is gonna be a lot harder. Um, so I wanna take the, the Something went well, and I want to be happy about that before we have to deal with the quantum <laughs> migration. Yeah. <laughs> um, one other thing that we did we did well we've got we've got the uh, feature parity between the quantum uh, API and the Nova Network API really really close to complete. Um, so we actually proxy floating IP requests that come into Nova over to quantum. We pl proxy security group support over to quantum. We improve the the VIF model so that we actually can have. Uh, API requests that come in, go to either backend and work. Um, that was really important so that people that are using Nova Network and then eventually want to go over and use a, a, a no, quantum OpenStack cloud can use the same set of primitives that they're used to. They don't get necessarily the same feature set. For example, quantum supports 
ingress security group rules instead of in addition to egress security group rules. And so if you want to use those extra features, you have to go talk to the quantum API. But at least a user can go, oh, I've been using this Nova floating IP add, and now I can still use the same command, and it will work. So that's really nice for, um, for end user compatibility. So I mentioned this a little bit already, but we did a lot more improvement on testing. One thing we did in Nova, we have these things called API sample tests, where we actually have a set of tests that run as part of our unit test suite that spins up an entire um, fake version of all of the components. So we have a, an API, Nova API running there, Nova Compute, Nova Network, with some stuff faked out in the back end, and then we make actual API requests and generate from a template and then generate the results. And we use that to feed the uh, docs, the api.opensac.org site to show us um, actual real API commands that could be run against the cluster. So we have, and we verify that every extension that gets added has tests to support it so that we can actually see end-to-end -end use of the APIs affecting the system. And it's also been good, it's also, it'll also catch if we ever accidentally change the format of like a response or something that, that causes a test failure and the patch can't get in. So it's been, it's really, it's really nice that we have coverage across the whole API for that now. Um, we also, so more complete test, test in, in Tempest. We improved our database migration testing quite a bit. A uh, number of errors cropped up when we started trying to do DB, DB migrations with real data. So we have an empty database that migrates perfectly, but once you throw data in there, um, there were a few places where we had, had bugs. And so we actually have some DB migration testing where we put real data in before the migration, do the migration, and then verify that it's in the right state, which um, is gonna make it a lot easier. We worked a lot, uh, a couple of people worked on grenade upgrade testing, which is basically what I mentioned earlier, that you take an install of stable Folsom, you run a bunch of stuff, you upgrade it to an install of Grizzly, and you make sure everything's still working. Uh, we, did a lot of incremental database improvements specifically. Um, we've never really had unique keys in the database, and you might wonder why, because databases are pretty good at that. Um, we have this idea of soft delete so that we don't lose data. Um, so so that, the way that we implemented that initially precluded having unique keys. We've now modified it in a way that we get soft deletes and still have um, unique keys. So that's gonna make our data model a little bit more consistent and eliminate some of the race conditions we've been dealing with. Uh, there's some support went in for archiving data, so because we do soft deletes, the database kind of grows endlessly unless an administrator goes in and kind of cleans out all of the old records. So now there's actually a command that you can do that will do that part for you, so you don't have to have a manual uh, cleanup script. And we improved the Postgres uh, support and actually are testing it, which is good. Some scaling features that went in. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have heard of cells. We've been talking about it for like three summits. <laughs> so the code's finally in, uh, and, and uh, there's some, it's experimental, there's some features that don't work, but for a limited use case, it works very well. Um, one, this this NoDB compute thing is also something we've been working on for three summits, and Russell uh, and Dan Smith from IBM led that. It's been pretty much eight months solid of just gradual refactoring. So the idea is, for security reasons and for scaling reasons, we wanted to remove database access from the compute nodes themselves and put it up into the control plane. And that actually works now, so you can run, a, run it where your compute nodes can't actually access the database. Um, bunch of scheduling features. You can live migrate without picking a host now and let the scheduler pick a host for you. Um, th these are all relatively minor little features, but as a whole they kind of are all interesting. So you can actually boot multiple instances and have them have different names before you would boot. You could say, boot, give me 100 instances and they'd all be named the same thing. So it's kind of hard to figure out which one's which. Um, you can, your availability zo zones are now based on our general structure called host aggregates, um, which means they can be changed dynamically. Before, uh, you'd have to specify in your config file what availability zone a node is in, and then if you ever wanted to change it, um, so you plugged in somewhere else, you'd actually have to go in and manually change the config and then restart the service. Now you have an API that you can change availability zones, an administrator API. A uh, bunch of small Nova network features. So we're not uh, trying to improve Nova network dr dramatically because we're trying to move everything over to quantum, but there were a few sort of warts or inefficient things in Nova network that we cleaned up. One of them is just we optimized it quite a bit, so it works a lot more quickly than it used to. 
Um, a, a couple small additions. You can now have the internal DNS, which is compute node to compute node, can be shared across uh, multiple hosts. So uh, internally to the cloud, you have a DNS record for the name of your host. Um, so if you, want, if you launch a, a server named foo, then you can get to it at foo.novalocal. Um, but in multi-host mode, it would only work on the, for VMs on that host. Now you can configure it to work for VMs across your system. Just a little convenience thing. Uh, another little convenience thing is you can actually share the DHCP IP address across multiple nodes in multi-host mode. So minor, minor Nova network cleanups, nothing dramatic and amazing because all that's happening in quantum, which means all of the people who used to help <laughs> with Nova networking <laughs> yeah. are, are now <laughs> in the quantum session. So we have a much quieter, maybe Russell will talk a little bit about that. Um, a uh, bunch of API extensions got added in. Most of the AP API extensions were about um, moving f functionality that was in Nova Manage into actual APIs. So Nova Manage, for those of you who don't know, was a, a little binary script file that you could run locally, but you had to have direct database access to use the commands, um, which meant it made it sort of hard to script. You have to log into one of your hosts that had database access and run the commands there. Um, so we moved all that functionality up into APIs so that you can do things like creating networks through the API, et cetera. Um, uh, all the stuff that Nova Manage used to do is in APIs now. There's a few other in interesting extensions like instance actions, which basically lets a user come in and see all the actions that have been done on their instance. Um, so it'll say, you know, at this time rebooted, this time snapshotted, et cetera. So you can kind of get a view of what happened um, and any errors that occurred during that process. This, this one, the default security rules have been asked for forever. Um, and this is another sort of little additional feature for people using Nova Network that are experiencing pain. So every time someone comes in an OpenStack cloud, they forget or they don't know that they need to allow them SSH to get into their instance. So an administrator can now say, okay, by default, put SSH in all the security groups so people don't have to do that manually. It's a nice little thing. Um, Git password allows you to um, securely get a Windows password from an instance that's generated by the guest. Um, theoretically, it works for Linux as well, although most people using Linux don't need a password because they have SSH keys. Um, and you can actually list availability zones to the API now, which you couldn't do. That was kind of an oversight. Uh, Libvirt, bunch of minor features, Spice support, uh, configurating configuration of NIC drivers. That's for older guests. So. If you happen to have a really old guest that's from some legacy application that doesn't have Vert.io drivers, then you can launch it and say don't use Vert.io, instead use an, a SCSI connection or an IDE connection. Um, we have events, so state is actually mapped directly out of the, if a state change happens in the libvirt, it's updated immediately now. It used to take uh, a periodic task, sometimes up to 10 minutes, to notice that, for example, your VM had crashed. Now instantly, as soon as it sta changes state in libvirt, it's updated in the database. Um, live snapshots, if you have a new enough version of Camu, you can snapshot an instance. It used to be that it paused the instance while it was doing the snapshot. Now it will actually do it in the background while the instance is running, which is kind of cool. Um, you can hot plug uh, IPs and network adapters now. So you can say, if you're using Quantum and you want to plug a new network into your VM while it's running, you can actually plug in a new adapter. Um, you can also add or remove an IP and it will configure the security group rules properly so that you can still talk to it with the new IP. Zen, uh, much less feature work went on in the Zen driver because it's already pretty good. Uh, it has config drive support, which is a compatibility feature that's great. They added some support for uh, BitTorrent uh, image downloads, so to spread your load for downloading images across uh, your cluster a little bit better. This is only one bullet point, but actually there are a lot of work went into ESX during this cycle. It's getting to the point where it's actually a, a sort of first class driver, which is really nice. And from what I understand, there will be more. Uh, so that's great to actually be able to have, we had this, we had a checkbox ESX driver before and now we actually have one that's functional. Um, so that's great. Uh, Hyper-V has gained a huge amount of features. Uh, there's a lot of active work going on there. Um, some of the lesser used APIs are implemented now, like live migration. Um, they have quantum support, uh, they have Cinder support, so it's, it's really going well. So there was my 15 minute overview of all the features. I hope I didn't bore the crap out of you by monotonally saying, well, we have this feature and that feature. I don't know, man, it's pretty exciting to me. That's, that's, that's <laughs> well, you're supposed there. to be excited. <laughs> okay.
So the so, uh, that's not working. Yet. Okay. So in uh, in Havana. So just to recap, uh, the way we do d development in OpenStack projects is we have this six month release cadence, and the in the very beginning of it is this event. We have a design summit. We've been hiding away in some rooms all week. Um, where we're going through all the things you want to do in the next six months. And Nova sessions span all four days. So really we're about you know three quarters of the way through. It's still going on now and throughout the afternoon. So, um, so what this is is sort of trying to capture the themes of the week and some of the things that, that we're talking about that we expect uh, people to be working on. Um, so first, um, start with some big themes. So you know when I sat back or when we both sat back this morning and thought about um, the discussions we've been having so far this week, some things that keep coming up. Live upgrades are at you know uh, at the, uh, near the top of the list of things that, that we need to continue chasing uh, and make work for people, um, so that, that so it's much easier to do rolling upgrades of, of an existing deployment, not not affect your existing user base. Uh, security is a huge thing. Uh, no DB compute uh, that Vish mentioned earlier was something we did for security. We're continuing to look at all the ways to um, to to make a, a Nova deployment more secure. So you know the, one of the I guess one of the biggest areas we look at is what if something, someone breaks out of a hypervisor? What is the impact of that? Um, having direct database access is one, per one particular bad thing. We're looking at all the, other, uh, all, the, all the other bad things you can do. Um, so we're trying to lock that down more and more. Scale and performance, as Vish mentioned, we recognize that we haven't had as much or as good of a focus on that. So we're, uh, we've been talking about ways we can improve that. And, and then reliability as well. Just not just, you know, it's not just about adding feature, but you know, what if, what if a service crashes while it's in the middle of doing something? You know, how can we do better at cleaning up and, and, uh, and so forth? So on some specific, more specific things that we've been talking about. One is the internal object model, and this is sort of related to the NoDB compute work, um, and it's also related to upgrades. So well, one of the problems, or one of the things that sort of limit us, limited us in the upgrade space is how tied we are to the database and, and the schema of the database. And so eliminating direct Communication with the database from the compute nodes helps us quite a bit since uh, there's a whole lot of those around talking. Um, but also for everything else, the API services and the scheduler and, and all these other services, we, we want to continue to decouple all of our code from, uh, from the database layer. So we're, we've been talking about an object model um, that sort of uh, that separates that. Um, so that's been uh, very important. Uh, also on the sort of upgrade area, and, and reliability, as a matter of fact, is graceful service shutdown. So when people need to upgrade, so right now if you wanna upgrade a, a, a compute, like it doesn't have anything built in um, to know about anything that it's in the middle of doing. So if you tell it to, like you upgrade uh, the package and you tell it to restart, it's just gonna kill it. And if it was in the middle of something too bad, then you know, things are gonna be in, in, in a weird state. So um, trying to get more better, uh, trying to get better about handling um, things that are in progress more gracefully. Um, RPC version control. This is another case um, that, that's really, really big for upgrades. So when I say RPC, I'm talking about all the, the ways that all the Nova services talk to each other. And we already have versioning on all these things, so we, we know if there's incompatible uh, services talking to each other, we already know that. But what, well, the next step we need to take is in upgrades, we need to sort of pin, p as you're like doing a rolling upgrade of everything, we need to lock all the services uh, into talking the old versions of everything until until everything's upgraded to, to the new the new hotness, and then you know sort of flip a switch that they, then they all start talking the new protocol. So that's something that um, that we're going to get done this time, and it's going to get us even closer to the to the upgrade. Um, bit better state handling. That's again that's actually sort of tied with the graceful service shutdown thing. So um, or so what if a service doesn't gracefully shut down? We're talking about better ways to keep track of operations in progress to understand what, how far we made it within something, uh, have good understanding of how we might be able to clean up or if, if necessary, how to resume where we were to, to continue. Um, so that's, that's one reason. It's also, there's actually some, some security stuff tied in with this. So to give an example, right now when you do um, an operation uh, like a migration, uh, there's, a lot of there's a lot of things where compute nodes are talking to each other and telling each other to do things and that's not so good for security. So we wanna take some of that control logic and move it up a layer um, so that there's something else that's, that's orchestrating these activities and that the compute nodes have less and less power uh, to tell each other to do things. So um, we're going to be doing a lot of refactoring in that area. There's a lot of discussion about Nova Client. Um, 
generally just giving it, giving it more love, um, making things a bit more consistent, um, trying to work with, uh, and actually the next slide is related to this too, work with the, the effort of uh, revving our API um, to be more consistent. So in the new version of the API, we're talking about, make, there's a lot of things that are inconsistent around the return codes and, and uh, things like that. We also wanna do a much better job of versioning API extensions, being able to do discoverability of features and things, that's just, um, important stuff there. And also reevaluate what we consider as sort of the base API or what a lot of people have called the core API, but core is a very overloaded term in our, our community, so I'll say the base API. And Nova API extensions. I don't know how many people here have, have worked on writing API extensions, but there's a desire to do some, uh, some big cleanup in this area to make it um, a bit more maintainable. Uh, it's gonna be based on uh, entry points, which is a, it's a Python thing, and we're moving lots of stuff within Nova and within OpenStack in general over to entry points as a way to, to load things. Um, and it may end up being a shared framework for, um, for all the projects. The, the idea of doing uh, extensions to the REST APIs is not something specific to NOAA, so that's something that we can, that's a, a cross-project effort that we can work on. Scheduling has been a, a big area of discussion. On Tuesday, we spent at least half the day, maybe a little bit more than half the day on various things around scheduling. Um, in some cases, it's sort of smaller scheduler features, just incremental things that people need, and, and then there's actually some really big problems we need to solve. Um, example of just kind of a, a feature, there's, there's additional bits of information people want to be able to schedule on. For example, being able to schedule based on uh, CPU utilization, not just how many cores it has and how many cores you've allocated based on what flavor you've booted. So that's something we'll add. Um, the ability to, to reserve a host, so the, there's a, some people would like to um, come in, like as a customer to the cloud, come in and, and say, I wanna pay to have a, a box sitting there that's mine and know that that capacity is there and only my VMs are gonna run on it. Uh, so we're gonna add some, some scheduling uh, magic to, to make that possible. Cross-project scheduling. So this is a really good example of how we've broken up the projects, but now we, we need to do a really good job of working together and, and cross-project scheduling is, uh, is a great example of that. Um, a good use case is you have an instance and you have a volume and you'd like them as close together as possible. So we need to, we need to work together to come up with a, a good way of handling that. And we, we've talked about that a lot this week. There's some good ideas and hopefully we'll see some um, real progress this time around. Group scheduling is another thing. So um, there's the uh, desire to add the concept of a group of instances in a Nova deployment. And if, you ha if that concept exists in Nova, then you can um, add some policy of, around that such as I don't want any of the VMs in this group to run on the same host for, um, for, for failure reasons. For example, if you have two instances for you know, high availability reasons, then you want to reduce the, the risk of the fact that if one dies, then the other one's gonna die. So I think that that's uh, another addition that will be very useful. So cells, cells is a, a really important thing that landed in the Grizzly release for scale reasons. Um, we'd like to keep pushing on that, get more developers in on it. Um, it, it works well for you know a particular use case, the people that developed it. There are some uh, additional things that we need to fill in to make it useful for more and more people. Um, I expect more and more people are start to using it, so I expect more feedback. But we talked about that a good, about a good bit this week and laid out the we know, you know specific items we need to work on. Uh, APIs for block devices. There's been a lot of um, complaints about that, and, uh, and and we're gonna work on that to make it um, easier to consume and. Uh, more, more predictable in the way it behaves. Uh, we talked about some major cleanup around, so we have all these different things that have completely different code paths in, the, uh, in Nova. So uh, we have, there's migrate, and then there's the live migration, and then there's resizing. Um, and migrate's actually a resize without the resize. And then you have evacuate, which is yet another sort of take on a very similar operation. And there's actually quite a bit of code which uh, and, and, and that can really be unified and if, um, and if we can unify it, then we can make these things uh, much better tested. Uh, that's actually, this, is, this is one of those areas that, that, that breaks more often than others, and um, part of it's because it's, it's hard to get good test coverage over it because it's a whole lot of stuff that, um, and, and a lot of different code paths that really shouldn't be different. So we've got a lot of work to, to, make, to clean up this stuff and make it more reliable. Um, mothballing a server. So this, was, this is an idea of, so right now if you, have a VM and you don't want to delete it, but you don't want it running either. So if you stop it, uh, as far as 
the Nova infrastructure is concerned, you're still consuming those resources. In reality, you're not consuming the RAM and you're not consuming the CPU and so forth, but, but the logic is such that, um, that you're still consuming it. So we want to be able to not consider those resources in use because it's, you know, because you want to be able to take those resources and use it for other virtual machines and pass those savings on to your customers. So we have some work to uh, sort of uh, to make all that work. Uh, refactoring of periodic tasks. Periodic tasks are sort of a, I don't know if source subject is the right word, but uh, periodic tasks come up a lot in, uh, in high-scale deployments as something that, that are poor performance problem. Um, things that run every, t you know, every minute to make sure the state of the world is still what we expect and you deploy 15,000 nodes and it turns out that you know, things like this aren't so good. So anyways, uh, changing the way we do all these various clean up tasks on a periodic basis to be more scalable is something we'd like to do. Quantum, a single word on a slide, but it's actually a pretty huge deal. Um, so for a while now we've had sort of these two parallel network stacks going. We have Nova Network and we have Quantum coming along. Quant the Quantum team's done an amazing job. The, um, the main thing that sort of held us back from sort of coming back and making Quantum the one and only thing was feature parity. That's not really an issue anymore. Either it's been addressed or um, the final things are being addressed this release cycle. So now we have the hard questions of um, what's next. And the biggest thing in this area is the, um, the upgrade path. So what if you're already using Nova? Uh, how, how do you uh, migrate it to Quantum? And um, how do we do that without just telling you to start over, you know, which no one's gonna like that answer. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna work hard on, on making that uh, the, the most seamless transition as possible. So we've got some hard work ahead of us in that area but uh, we think it's really important. Uh, and the vert drivers. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of work that all of the sessions on the vert drivers are, are today, so this is, these discussions are still in progress. Um, but there's a lot of activity, a lot of discussion uh, of libvert. Um, there was a, a VMware session this morning, sounds like there's some, uh, some good features coming there. Uh, there's been a ton of discussion about the bare metal, even though there's a specific session on the bare metal driver later this afternoon, there's been a ton of discussion of OpenStack on OpenStack and the triple O effort all week. Uh, so that's a really hot thing right now. Um, so, and, and more. So just these are the things that have come up in discussions this week. Um, we only had so many time slots, even though we, we had a lot, we had all four days. Um, there were still a lot of ideas proposed that didn't fit because we only had so much time. And um, based on past experience, just because we didn't talk about it here doesn't mean it's not gonna get done. Um, it's just, you know, anyone here is just as capable has just as much ability to influence uh, the direction in the next six months. Um, you just have to show up with discussion and code. So uh, I'm sure there's gonna be, if we, when we come back in six months, I'm sure the list is gonna be you know, triple the size of the things that actually got done because this community is pretty amazing. And with that, on to uh, questions. How much time do we have? About uh, five, uh, maybe five to, five to seven minutes. There's a microphone here in the middle of the room if you'd like to, to come up and um, uh, come, up, come, come to the microphone so that uh, it gets, on the video. Okay. Regarding the API extensions, have you guys looked at um, extending the get password API to retrieve um, key pair to access uh, Linux VMs? So the, the way that we store key pairs currently is we, you actually upload or create a key pair before you launch the VM. And the git password actually leverages a key pair to do it securely, so it, part of using git password is to already have given a key pair. So there's two ways you can do it. There's one is you can have the server create a key pair for you and then give you your private key, which maybe is not the most secure thing, but it's convenient. And then there's, you can create your own private key and then upload the public key to the server. Um, so that, that ex exists already. Is that what you're asking, or? Because I know there's been discussion around secret as a service, and right now it's this component is kind of outside of um, OpenStack, so that's why I was just trying to see if you have been trying so to address I, it. So once, once we have secrets as a service more fleshed out, <coughs> I would hope that the key pair related stuff that we do at Nova would probably move there because there's no reason for us to also have our own way of storing key pairs, but right now Nova stores its own key pairs. If oh, thanks. Uh, uh, when you use the uh, experimental to describe the compute cell, what does that mean? Does that mean you it's not mature yet, but you uh, it will be uh, improved, uh, improved, or that will 
go away at any time. Um, so, so what does experimental mean for cells? Uh, we do not expect it to go away at any point. I guess what the, 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 the point of calling that experimental is, well, one, I know it, it's reliable in that it's already being used in significant scale already, and it works great for them. Um, it's experimental because there's some features such as security groups. Security groups is a, it's a, it's a big thing that it's important to a lot of people, but that's not supported in cells right now. So it's just that it's not, we don't, it's, we don't consider it like complete enough for everybody. So we still have some significant work to do there before we consider it like the answer that everyone should be using. So still, it's just sort of like work in progress deal. But, but for what's there, I mean, it's solid and it's great. Anything else? All right, then. Thank you very much.